The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. I've got no remorse. My nest egg looking pretty. Brent and Drew the boys showed the world immutability. Jack and Hash is on the blockchain. Try not to be coy. The world says, short the banks, buy your Bitcoin. Everybody Welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. Brent, it's been another uh, week at the speed of crypto. Oh, what man. Are, what, I mean, just boom. Yeah, what, what are the markets doing to us? I'll tell you been, what, the markets have been pretty good. I mean, they're up today. You know, the NASDAQ's been making an all-time high. The S&P's been making an all-time high. The Dow is is still uh, well below its all time high. You know, Bitcoin's pierced the twelve thousand, mm-hmm. come back down below it. You know, kind of working its way back. Gold's gotten above two thousand. Now it's a little bit below two thousand. Silver just keeps rocking along, and and Earl West Texas Earl oh, yeah. is in the forty two range. So, okay, so it's not a bad not a bad market. So There's far. cha-ching it around a little There's bit of celebrating right. here There's and right. there. And, you know, somebody's making a dollar. They are. They are. I, I, you know, I wonder. I wonder what the uh, with with all the news and all the stuff that we see with all the chaos and all that. I wonder how the. I wonder if they're making if they're monetizing their commercials better. Well, know? I I don't know about that, but I tell you what, the thing you got to realize is the markets are always looking to the future. Yeah, and so. It's very easy for the markets to overlook today's problems. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, with a lot of the rise in employment and the decrease in the unemployed and things starting to open back up, well, then the markets, you know, are kind of looking past that. And that's why you're sitting in new highs. Plus, they're making a lot of money. So that money's got to find a home. And so they're figuring that it's going to find a home in equities because it can't find a home anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. We've got a, uh, you know what? We're going to have Larry Castro on with Stealth yeah. Grid. And they've got a unique new product, a system that deals with this uh, whole COVID thing, which will actually what, what they what they've done is the way I understand it is is uh, it's new uh, cleaning systems right, or whatever right. that are going to be very efficient, which you know yeah. factually will help with other things like influenza oh, and sure. all that stuff. Oh sure, so. it's you know it's one of those kind of gifts that'll keep on giving. Yeah, exactly. Least, yeah, you know, know Jonathan and cryptocurrency wire will have old Jonathan on. Oh yeah, in his new studio. In he's, his new he's studio, kind of fancy. Oh you know, man, I'll tell yeah. you what, proud of him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's always fun to get with him. Uh, you're going to do your over the fence. Oh, post. yep, yep, yeah. I'm 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 going to be talking to Ronald Reagan today. Oh, there, well, you know, do one for the Gipper. Man. I will do one for the Gipper. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll have the good, the bad, and, and the, the ugly. ugly, and then I'm going to do my cowboy logic and be a little bit of a slant today, and it kind of applies to an old guy. And I was looking at these things, and I thought, yeah, I fit in every one of those categories. You know, I'm, I'm officially, matter of fact, I'll be. You might be an old fart. If you do this, this, and this, you might be an old fart. That's yeah. it. Well, well, you know, and you and I had birthdays a day apart yep. a few years apart, yep. right? Yep. Yep. And, uh, but I had the big six zero this year. Ooh, you know, ooh. Yeah. You, remember you know what? what? The, the funny thing is, is 30 didn't bother me, 40 didn't bother me, 50 didn't bother me. The six zero, I was kind of going. Damn, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to ask you. Is 60 like officially? No, yeah. no. You know what you do is just make sure you go out somewhere and beat the crap out of some 20 or 30 year old kid, and then you, <laughs> then, then you go, I still got it. You know? Yeah, 60. That's yeah. what I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know you better now. Hey, folks, we got a great show ahead for you, so stay tuned. Wild West Crypto Show be back here in two minutes. Most financially successful people own assets that make them money while they sleep. They usually own real estate, vehicles, intellectual property, equipment, and more. These assets make passive income through leases, subscriptions, royalties, and fees that don't require time, energy, or attention. Your assets do the work, and you collect the check. So what kind of asset should you buy? The most valuable companies in the world, like Amazon, Google, and Apple, all have the same thing in common. They make a majority of their revenue from data technology assets, storing, collecting, processing, and providing data. It's all about the data. What if you could own data tech assets with a low upfront cost? Introducing Apex, a proprietary technology built to process and mine data and render artificial intelligence and 3D gaming at exceptionally high rates. Apex Tech has partnered with SafeTech, a subsidiary of a publicly traded company called InvestView. 
SafeTech's business model leverages Apex technology to disrupt the multi-trillion dollar data tech industry, giving you the competitive advantage. SafeTech's growth strategy is to capture a significant share of the market. SafeTech will enter into a 60-month lease with owners of Apex Systems. Why would they do that? Why not just buy all the equipment themselves? The same reason most companies lease instead of own, to scale quickly without the upfront costs and for the tax benefits. So how do you get started? You purchase an Apex system. Then you can lease it to SafeTech for 60 months at a rate of $500 per month. That's a total of $30,000 paid to you over the life of the lease. So what's your responsibility besides purchasing the Apex system? Nothing. During the lease, SafeTech is responsible for any maintenance costs to keep things running for you. Just collect a check every month for the next 60 months. This tremendous financial opportunity positions you to follow the strategies of the financially successful. You can leverage data technology to produce passive income that generates revenue without your time, energy, or effort. This is what is meant by creating multiple streams of income, but the opportunity to participate will not last forever. If this concept fits your financial goals, take action today while you still have the chance. Welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show Daily Update. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And uh, Brent, what are the markets? Are, okay, well, I wore a, I wore a blue shirt. Well, you know, having a blue shirt on is is apropos because everybody's pretty blue out oh, okay. there. And the reason okay. being is is that I got on the red shirt because there's a whole lot of red out there. In fact, I've got the shirt that's got the the lines this way and the lines that way and red everywhere because that's pretty much how the market is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, we're we're taking a beating out here. Uh, we're down about uh, a little shy of 300 on Bitcoin. We're at 11,680, 675, depending on your exchange. That's 2.27%. Uh, the overall market, though, is down 3.5. Oh, the altcoins are falling. <clears throat> so, you know, the way the math works, folks, is that Bitcoin's about 60% of everything uh, on the crypto space. And so for us to be down another point, 1.3 beyond that, that means the altcoins are just are, are floundering. Uh, the Dow's off 84, S&P's off 14, NASDAQ off 98, and all of those are 0.3% uh, down, uh, NASDAQ's down 0.8. Gold's even lost 62 bucks. Really? 62 bucks. Apparently, somebody has a car payment that's due here in the next few days or something, because <laughs> we're just selling the snot out of everything. And silver is down 59 cents. Wow. Now, I don't know if this is all a reaction to the Democratic National Convention. It's pretty depressing. Well, you know, I'd start selling if I saw that too. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, apparently the Texans aren't having any of it because Earl, yeah. our West Texas Earl, is at 42.84. That's up 32 Ooh. cents. The only thing going up is oil, people. Everything else is down. And, you know, there's a whole lot of red. In fact, you know, the, uh, the December 21 that was up 600 the yeah. other day, well, it's given up 435 of it which is not too bad considering that the market's given up almost 300 of it on its own. So it's a little bit of a bloody day out there. But, you know, uh, when people would call me and say, well, wh why is this happening? Yeah. There's more sellers than there are buyers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You well, well, you know, so folks, now what Brent just said to us, let me put this on a bumper <laughs> sticker for you. Everything's on sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's Isn't that the thing, truth? Yeah. That's the way it works. Everything's on sale. A uh, couple of interesting things here. Morgan Stanley, and you know, I I I, I like to say that um, people that are, uh, you know, pontificators of the markets, right, what all right. they're going to do and all that, they're like weathermen. Sure. Right. And half of them are always yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So you know, Morgan Stanley, they said that this year's best safe haven is not Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, silver, gold, like we, I, I yeah. believe, a bow. We talked about it and all that. No, they said it's U.S. dollar. Oh yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Oh my God. Folks. What what Morgan Stanley economist wrote that? I mean, the US dollar, the one that oh let, hell, let's create four more trillion of it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? I'd like to bail out New York, LA, yeah. Chicago. Let's do another ten trillion dollars. Yeah. Let's hold a dollar. Oh my you know, <laughs> yeah. that's an Aggie ring. No, that doesn't even, that didn't even pass Aggie math by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> we expect the U.S. dollar to be the best safe haven currency, oh. especially now that U.S. rates make it more attractive and fund in more attractive funding currency for carry trades. 
And although they said it is on a 27-month low, so the dollar's falling. What are you talking about, catching a knife? Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're yeah. trying to catch it. So all you folks that are using Morgan Stanley, which I never have, actually. No. You know, um, if you're quaking a little bit in your boots, maybe you ought to talk to somebody else. You know, <laughs> but I just thought that was kind of funny that, you know, they're the only one I've seen. I'm, I'm sure he's educated. I'm sure he's got a bunch of degrees from a bunch of oh you know, yeah uh, Ivy League schools. Yeah, and he's probably never been in business. And you know, I'd suggest no they send him to experience. West Texas and let him shovel manure for a while. And <laughs> yeah, there you go. And tough and, him up. And this next one, Brent, and it just you know it's one of those deals that kind of bugs me, right? Anytime I hear another country in the world that is leading something that we ought to be leading. Oh yeah. It just kind of gets under my iron. So, hey, Trump, I'm talking to you on this one, buddy, and I appreciate all that you've been doing, even with the headwinds you have. But, you know, step it up a little bit. So listen to this. Russia pilots federal voting. Now, maybe that's how they're going to rig our voting system. They're going to put it, they're putting voting on the blockchain, which, frankly, is one of the absolute best use cases. Well, sure they are, because the Russian, who's better at cheating than the Russians? Yeah. You know, if they, if you know, believe me, you know, uh, a thief is not going to let somebody else steal from them. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so, so think about this, folks. If you want to DNC, you can already order your uh, U.S. election results from Russia on the blockchain because they've already <laughs> done the election. I heard us, something you know. the other day. A lady was talking about, oh, yeah, you know, voting by mail is going to be great. She says, listen, you know, here's the one that I got. Yeah. And notice down here it's uh, some, something by mail dash R. Yeah. I live with my brother. This is his. Something, something dash D. Yeah. You know. When you get the thing, it's already done telling you whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. She says, oh, there's no chance mine's going to get thrown in the trash. Oh, no. And the Postal Workers Union, just because they support rambling Joe, bambling Joe, no, nah, they wouldn't. There's no, no, they'd do the right. Okay, so listen, here's, my, here's the good news. All right. Okay. So Japan, for their first baseball game, because they don't have fans out there and stuff, All right. so they got dancing robots. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, they had about 40 robots, and they got out there and had their had the uniforms on and all that stuff. And here's what I love about it. Not a single robot took a knee. And what I'm thinking <laughs> is, think how much money we could save, the owners could save. Maybe we replace all of our overpaid sportsmen, because I don't watch any of them anymore. Maybe we pay all of them. Or we could just turn it into a big video game. That's what I'm thinking. I yeah. mean, go virtual. You don't need them. Yeah, exactly. Folks, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Howdy folks, my name is Jonathan Keim and I am the Communications Director of Cryptocurrency Wire. It's just one brand of over 30 that are part of the Investor Brand Network that we've developed over 10 years. So we've got lots of brands, most of them focus on the investment crowd. And what we primarily focus on with our Cryptocurrency Wire brand is to connect mainstream and financial markets with the latest innovations that are coming out in crypto. So that way they're informed and can benefit from the technology and the inventors you know, behind them can benefit from you know, all their labors and all the great things that they're coming out with. If you would like to reach out to us, feel free to go to our website at CryptocurrencyWire.com or you can follow us for the latest news on Twitter at CryptoNet. Wire. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And we have with us from his new studio, oh. Jonathan Kime. Crypto Crypt. Jonathan, how are you doing? It's looking great. Oh, pretty good. Oh, thanks, Drew. Well, we're very excited about it. Today, we've used this more than we've ever used in a single day. It's been nonstop from about 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock right now. Ah, good. Well, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Hey, Jonathan. you know what? If you stand there too much, you're going to have to get one of them rubber mats that you stand on to, you know, for your legs. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking into those. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. You got some great stories this week, Jonathan. So let's dive into this first one. Blockchain and Gemini. Partner in industry first to bring digital assets to registered investment advisors. As we know, Gemini is the Winklevoss twins, and those guys have been trying to get some movements. So tell us about what they've accomplished. Sure. So they're now providing those registered investment advisors with a secure one-stop shop for buying, selling, and storing digital assets. Quantum Capital Management, which is a decent-sized fund, has already signed on with the view that the risk adjusted returns and growth potential of digital assets are just too significant to ignore. 
So now firms like them with little to no knowledge of the digital asset ecosystem can participate with confidence, which should further accelerate the adoption of crypto assets. No kidding. You, well, you know, in, in the fishing world down here, we call that being a fishing guide. So these guys are now becoming the crypto oh, guys. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing, we've been saying for a long time that it's a whole new asset class. Mm -hmm. The fact that registered investment advisors, having been one for a decade or so myself and a bunch of other stuff, um, the fact that they're wanting in, mm -hmm. that they're willing to trust the, the Winklevoss folks and, and, and provide those services, this is huge because it is further verification that it is an asset class yeah. and the investment world has taken note. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Listen, Tron, Tron and Waves partner on Interchain DeFi with Gravity. Oh my gosh, got a whole bunch of them in this one. Tell me all about it, Jonathan. Sure thing. So they're looking to link DeFi services and solutions between their blockchain communities. That's the main focus. And I certainly expect to see more announcements like this one in the month ahead. Um, I'm just not sure the internet is really ready to be fragmented into small pockets of all these different blockchains. And my guess is they're seeking other alliances as well. And just to be clear what's happening here, the TRC20 tokens from Tron will be available on Waves and various tokens of the Waves ecosystem will be available on Tron. And I think this is the bigger side. Developers from both ecosystems will be able to create modern cross-chain D apps, decentralized applications that will work on both chains. So it's kind of the same excitement for you know the PS4 and the Xbox gamers out there where there's been a little bit more cross play between the platforms. Essentially the same thing here, just put it in a different light. Well, so, so I mean, it sounds like it'll open it up to a broader audience than what they've been able to do in the past with this. Oh, and, and we've been talking about for years that you know, we're going to have to kind of join up. You know, mm -hmm. we got to get critical mass, critical numbers. You know, you can't be an island of, of 500 customers and survive. I yeah. Mean, you know, you, you got to scale and and for them to, to join hands and, and do cross-platform type stuff is a next step in kind of building a, a big enough mound yeah. that we're not a molehill anymore. We become a mound. Well, you know, Jonathan, to your point, when you're talking about all of a sudden you're segregating these different things, it'll be interesting to see what innovative solutions come up to deal with that as well. Because every time you deal one of these, you know, what could be a concern, someone is out there solving the problem. That's right. Yeah, yeah. All right, this last one here, the crypto phenomenon cannot be ignored says U.S. banking regulator. Uh, they woke up, Jonathan, for, for two and a half, three years, five years, they've been asleep. Tell us about that. Sure. So in an interview with CNN, the acting comptroller of the currency said quite a lot actually here. Um, in summary, though, he said he's not a crypto bull nor a crypto bear. He simply recognizes reality. And I, I just really like that statement. This is the same individual who recently allowed banks to offer cryptocurrency custody services just a few weeks ago, uh, advocating the case for crypto. He says that you know payments need to happen virtually instantaneously without error. Of course, only crypto can offer that. Uh, I can't Im even imagine what it's been like uh, with the recent stimulus payments going through you know, our legacy system. I I'm surprised it's even able to handle all of that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's you know, that's a huge move. What I love about this is he's not a bear. Yeah. You know, he's not a bull. Yeah. He's a realist. Yeah. And that also tells you that we've made a lot of headway in the three years that you and I've been working on this, Drew, of them realizing that this solves a unique set of classes, a set of problems, that of instantaneously and mm -hmm. authentic authentication and you know the veracity of the actual trade and stuff. And and so now um Gosh, if we can just get down to a level playing field and have them quit lying about us and, you know, uh, over-regulating us and, yeah. and so on and so forth, it's a fair fight. We'll win that fight. Yeah, and, and to his point, can't be ignored anymore. I mean, that's, uh, it's been there and it's, you know, <laughs> the fire's at the door. We can't ignore it. Let's at least get in and somehow figure out how to work with it. That's all, awesome. All, all that in a new studio with Jonathan. I know, man. That's been a great week. <laughs> Jonathan, thanks as always, buddy, and look forward to seeing what you have for us next week. Not a problem. Look forward to it as well. All right, folks. Wild Post Crypto Show. Be back here in two minutes. Hi, I'm Drew Taylor from Kerrville, Texas. 
I've had the great pleasure of joining some of the top real estate investors from all over the United States and Canada. We want to buy your home. We buy in all price ranges, all conditions, and all circumstances. And because we are cash investors, we can close much quicker than a normal real estate deal that uses a traditional mortgage. You don't even have to worry about doing repairs, or if your mortgage is upside down, we will still buy your home. If you need to sell your home quickly and need a fair offer, then just fill out the form next to this video. We will then match you with one of our experienced investors. They will contact you within 48 hours to discuss your property and your situation. If you can't wait 48 hours, no problem. Scroll down to the bottom of this page and click on the Sell Quick button. You will be taken to a form to tell us about the details of your property. Fill out the form as completely as possible. This will speed up the process so we can match you to the right investor to get your home purchased. Thanks for coming by and taking the time to watch this video. I hope to see you at the closing table soon. Howdy folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show Daily Update. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. Hey, hey Brent, now I don't, is the color of my shirt coming through there, do you think? Because not it's better in, in the live screen but i tell you what i mean he, <laughs> well i didn't know if i did we're he looks like one people. of them beacon things on the highway you know i mean he's about as orange i mean and lime green and hot <laughs> i'm i'm more muted i'm kind of i'm almost like mauve but not quite that dark well i wasn't sure what the markets were going to do today so you know well yeah. i tell you what the markets are green today overall markets are green bitcoins up 100 uh puts it about 11 8 65 or so uh, the total crypto market is up 1.4%, 1 1.37, where Bitcoin's only up about 0.8. So the altcoins are coming back. You know, they took it on the nose yesterday, took yep. it on the chin. Dow's up 47 at that 27,740. You know, S&P and the NASDAQ are making all-time highs. Which, okay, okay. You know, if you think about it, that's just crazy given, you know, kind of where the world is. Yeah. But apparently they like anarchy. It works well for their, their <laughs> business model. And, and they're up 10 and 160, respectively. Gold's coming back. You know, I had a big, big drop. Yeah. Uh, it's up 24 bucks today. That's 1952, the year my wife was born, by oh, the way. Oh, there you go. And then silver's up 1.13 at 2744. And Earl, our uh -oh. West Texas Earl, it's up three cents. Uh -oh. You know, it's it's busting out. It's, it's at 4277. And the futures are kind of where you would expect, given where we are today. So overall, not a bad day. Yeah, uh, a little rebound from the the bloodbath we had on the red shirt day, and now we're on the green shirt. Yeah, or some kind of yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what, man, Brent? I, I tell you what. Top of this broadcast, I want to go in and I want to talk about Steve Bannon for a minute. Okay, okay go ahead. Because I, I, I you know, he's he's been indicted for pulling money off the top of one of their some endeavor to their doing build a wall. And I have to tell him to all of our conservative buddies out there. Let me tell you something. I don't care what happens on the other side of the fence. You've got, you're held to a higher standard, and by golly, you all need to live up to it. And every time I see any conservative that is indicted or found guilty or something, and doesn't mean he's guilty because it's indicted, but supposedly there's a paper trail, you got to hold yourself to a higher standard, and you deserve to be slapped across the fence yeah. if you're not. And we'd be happy to do it. Sure. Yeah, he ought to be in prison for that hair. That COVID hair got way too long, man. I'm telling you, kind of looking greasy and slick back. So anyway. Yeah. But I had to say that out there and put it right out, deal it straight up, and by golly, if you're guilty, string them up. It doesn't, doesn't yep. bother me, you know. And next time, you know, everything has to have a little bit of promote because otherwise it don't it don't promote. It yeah. don't go anywhere. You know, just phone, you know, fess up to what kind of percentage you're going to get out of the deal to get the deal done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I wanted to, you know, this is one of those little things where the infighting in cryptocurrencies, we talk about, you know, oh, yeah. so much of the family all and all that, but Max Kaiser slamming Bitcoin cash, and this is that Craig Wright thing and everything else, where there's, uh, Kaiser's saying, Bitcoin Cash is going to euthanize itself again. <laughs> and so I just, I, I kind of find, find it kind of funny how all these big, you oh, know, yeah. they're playing king of the mountain so much of the time. Well, you know, you know what, what we need to do is, is, is when the world gets back to normal and, and I get rid of this and everybody quits wearing this and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And the next big crypto event we have, 
We need to buy us a couple sets of Wild West Crypto boxing gloves. Oh, yeah. And then let's just put those two guys in the ring like my brothers and I did for the yeah. last pork chop at dinner and see who comes out with it. Absolutely. You know, my dad, when I was a kid, and I had six brothers, uh-huh. and, you know, and uh, we, we lived on property out there, had a gravel pit. And if we were ever fighting in the gravel pit, my yeah. dad would literally lead us down to the gravel pit <laughs> if we're fighting at the house. He'd yeah. lead us to the gravel pit and say, all right, now let's go. <laughs> By the time we got down there, we didn't want to fight anymore, but we he made us do it. So. Oh, yeah. That's a good oh, idea. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. And then, uh, you know, North Korea, and I find it funny every time they talk about things North Korea is doing oh, yeah. in hacking and all that kind of stuff. Right. And here's an article today. They have 6,000 hackers, most who operate outside of North Korea. That makes a little bit more sense. And look where they're from. Belarus, China, India, Malaysia, and Russia. And so, you know, the North Koreans are out there. Uh, it's amazing the reach that they have. I'm sure they're in our election. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. And, and you know. They've probably already received their mail-in votes. I bet all they those, have. All those yeah. 6,000 hackers. Yeah, I guarantee yeah, exactly. I, uh, let me tell you something. I'm trying to get ahead of the game. I'm only doing one mail-in vote a day. Right. You know, yeah. I figure if you do one a day, come up to election, we can make a difference. Um, the other thing, so, uh, you know, here's some info. Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, I was reading an article last week that said 67% of Americans don't are are resistant to using fiat cash, paper money, which, you know, that bodes its well toward cryptocurrencies. But they're saying that this pandemic, they're they're saying that it'll go well for Bitcoin. Of course, it hit 12,000 pretty recently. And one of the guys that's kind of involved in this pontification says, I mean, it's sad to think that COVID you know, might go and help with the cryptocurrency, right. but if it's going to put it on the positive side, we can go ahead and live with it, you know? Well, you know what I find fascinating? I don't know if you've noticed it, but a lot of places are saying, due to the coin shortage at the Federal Reserve, and I'm like, going, what coin shortage at the Federal Reserve? Yeah. Okay. You know, all of a sudden, you know, before COVID was on paper money. Yeah. Now the coins are in shortage. Oh, yeah. Um, something's up. And, and it isn't because they're hodled in silver like we've recommended yeah. y'all do. I, I don't, because you know, I don't coins... see nobody walking by with their pockets just <laughs> way down there. I got all my coins, baby. Yeah. That I was mean... that was Kramer on Seinfeld one time. Yeah, but yeah. So I don't know. I don't know exactly where that uh, coin shortage is coming from. Seems kind of funny because everything since what sixty five hasn't had any silver in it. No. You know. Yeah. But anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> we'll see you again tomorrow. Are you about to miss out on the next big boom? In the 1970s, the U.S. military tapped the power of the human mind. Elite soldiers learned how to see and know things across space and time, a form of psychic espionage called remote viewing. Today, some of the top remote viewers in the world are looking ahead to our new digital monetary system. Each week, the crypto viewing team looks for the untold secrets and inner workings of cryptocurrencies. There is going to be a quick peek and a quick rise. Who are the players? IBM teaming with a large Asian conglomerate. What's their intent? Sense of the mass adoption. We're talking global. Which will rise to the top. Watch future events unfold before your very eyes. Sign up today at patreon.com slash crypto viewing. Now stay tuned for the good, bad, and ugly. Folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And Brent, it is time for... The good. The bad. And, and the, the ugly. ugly. So, so the good today, and it's, you know, it's, it's tough because it's on the back of yep. the bad with yep. COVID. Oh, yeah. But uh, they're... Uh, uh, a guy out there who's who's big into the cryptocurrency space and all that by the name of Chom says, you know, there's a silver lining with this whole COVID thing because it's really going to benefit Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for a long time because people aren't wanting to handle paper money anymore. Yeah. And well, he's right. He's right. You can take all your paper money, mail it in to P.O. Box. <laughs> We'll take I'll, I'll handle that stuff all day long. Yeah, remember when this whole thing first started? <laughs> China went out there and burned like oh, yeah. eight hundred million dollars yeah. worth of. Yeah. And I, if they'd have just put it on a carrier and yeah. sent it over to us, we'd yeah. have gone ahead and taken the chance. Well, you know, uh, Castro's got the machine to clean it. 
Why do you think, oh, that's I, right. why do you think yeah. I want all that paper money? Well, well, there you go. Yeah, we can get it cleaned up. So so if there's going to be a good and a silver lining in anything, it's that, you know, they're saying, he, he, his quote is, I mean, it's sad to think that something that I care so much about, like Bitcoin, is going to benefit from all these bad things that are happening to the planet, but may as well be positive about it. <laughs> So that's our good for the oh, day. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go with the bad. And, yeah. and and many in Belarus, China, India, Malaysia, and Russia. Oh, yeah. yeah. North Korea. Okay. It's it's all, it's always North Korea. It is. It's yeah. always North Korea. Kim Jong-un, for, for that little, little postage <laughs> stamp of a country that is uh, oppresses its people oh, yeah. in a way that is just incredible. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, I read last night, and this is bad. The, the, it, this goes to the bad. Oh, yeah. It parlays this bad. They, he started confiscating dogs from parts of his country to help with the famine that is going on over there right now. All right. And so, you know, but but here, this little bitty country, they've got hackers. 6,000 hackers. Yes, around the world and all those countries that you mentioned <laughs> and all that, that are wreaking havoc on the rest of the world and stealing. I think we did a, a, a thing here a few weeks ago right. about all this cryptocurrency oh, yeah. that they'd stolen. it, And I'm just like, why is it not isolated, you know, to the island of, of Moreau where, Nothing even comes out of there, but they they really managed to wreak havoc. Oh, and it's surprising, but you know when you get right down to it, you know um, birds of a feather. Oh well, yeah. And so I mean, you know, you got these hackers that are kind of you know the little uh, basement dwelling evil types, and they're going to find the guy with the worst haircut they can find, and that doesn't live in a basement has his own palace. And <laughs> yep. Kim Jong Un is it? Well, yeah, exactly. Now, now I will tell you, you know, to kind of. Close off on that point. They say he's been sick lately. Think about it. We haven't seen anything of him in a couple of no, months. No, that's true. His little sister's out there that was at the Olympics right. smiling and everybody right. thought she was so cute. Right. But my understanding is she's got more devil in her than he does. So she's now head of executions or what? <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me if she puts him up on the block. You know? oh, hey, geez. Kim Jong-un, you better watch out. Your sister may be after you. Oh, buddy. yeah. Nothing yeah. like a sister. Yeah, exactly. And the ugly. So, so Max Kaiser, you, you know, everybody knows who Max Kaiser is slams Bitcoin cash saying it's going to euthanize itself again. And, and you know, Brent, the infighting between, oh, yeah. you know. Well, for my redneck buddies, let me say something. Max Kaiser, he's what you call a, a, a Bitcoin maximalist. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Um, I didn't say a Marxist. I said a maximalist. And so basically a Bitcoin maximalist says the only cryptocurrency that's needed is Bitcoin. Yeah. It's what created this whole fad. Uh, you can do everything with it that you need to and so on and so forth. Now, there's been a lot of people that have built on the back of it other ways to automate contracts and do all kinds of other neat things, and they disagree with that. But, you know, many times your Bitcoin maximalists are kind of the the uh, the rednecks of the Bitcoin industry or the <laughs> cryptocurrency industry. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, uh, screw you, I'm in charge kind of deal. Yeah, so, yeah so, so he's out there, you know, in a tweet, renowned uh, Bitcoiner, like he said, Bitcoin maximalist, has called Bitcoin Cash and supporters of it that cannot be quoted here, added that Bitcoin Cash, they're, them supporting it, it's pu less puzzling and everything else. And bottom line is he says that it's Bitcoin Cash is going to euthanize itself again through forking and all that. And, and that's where, you know, what I find interesting about this, Brent, is with maximalists like right. that, it's, it's like Mercedes really invented the automobile. Oh, yeah. Ford made it, yeah. you know, the every man's car. Yep. And I, but uh, it's like to go out and say that there's no room for anything else on the planet but a Mercedes, and you with your big Dodge <laughs> truck probably wouldn't agree with that. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interesting thing, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, I mean, we've been in this about three years now. Yeah, this, yeah. And we go to a lot of the conventions and stuff, and Drew all kind of go, did you see that dude? You know, was he wearing his pajamas or what was he wearing? You know, or the, this other guy looks like he's Darth Vader. And I mean, you know, you got some really unique uh, individuals out yeah. there. You know, watching these people fight is kind of like watching a basketball player fight. I yeah. Mean, you know, they go to throw the punch and it takes about five seconds for them long arms to get back to here and back to there. And then by that time, somebody's moved, you know, it's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. But the interesting thing is, is the, is the crypto Twitter wars and the wars among the crypto aficionados is rampant. I remember the time you did the Indian leg wrestle with John Kim in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. And rolled him over in a New York minute. You know? Yeah. But, you know, he, but he had a great sense of humor. He got up, he accused you of being on steroids and everything <laughs> else, and it was over, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But anyway, so but hey, folks, in, in this play, in this crypto space, let's focus on the good parts of it instead of the bad. And matter of fact, probably as a country, that's oh, some saying. And, and have some fun and realize that the real challenge is us to teach everybody out there, our redneck buddies, 
your basement dwelling buddies or whatever kind of buddies you got to go crypto. That's it. Folks, Wild West Crypto Show, be back here in two minutes. Hello, fellow investors. I'm Argelia. My friends call me RG. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate? You've probably heard your entire life there's no better investment than real estate. It is truer in Texas than anywhere else in the country. Whether you're looking for a vacation casita on one of Texas' beautiful lakes or rivers, your dream second home, or a ranch unlike anything you've ever seen, Texas is the place. I've spent my life helping people get what they want. I want to help you realize your dreams. My clients don't stay clients long. I've made lifelong friends through helping people. Texas real estate is where it's at. Simply go to www.talktorg.com. Fill out a simple form so I can find exactly what you're looking for and you can capitalize on the Texas real estate market. I'm RG and I look forward to being your friend. Again, go to www.talktorg.com. I look forward to meeting you soon. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. It's the Over the Fence post segment with myself, Brent Bates. You know, this week I just can't help but think about some things that I remember hearing about when I was in my 20s and 30s. And that was things that were said by uh, probably one of our greater presidents, Ronald Reagan. And I know for some of the young crypto folks out there, you weren't alive when Reagan was, was president, nor were, do you probably even know a whole lot about him. But you know, he had some wonderful sayings besides being a, a very, very lively and uh, great personality, wonderful, wonderful president. But one of the comments that he made that has always stuck with me that's very apropos today is, is that the fact that our democracy is only one generation away from extinction. And he admonished us back in the day to be sure and teach your children that freedom is fought for, that it is not free and to teach them the mores and the standards with which this country was founded and those that they need to be acting upon as they go through their life. And unfortunately, I think we've had a lot of people that are very educated, probably overeducated, but unfortunately, they don't really uh, aspire to some of the same thoughts and, and directions that their forefathers uh, did and what this country's been founded on. For instance, uh, one of the other common statements that old Ronnie made was, is that government's not the answer, government's the problem. Government's not the solution, government's the problem. And unfortunately right now we have a whole series of young people out there that believe that all solutions have to emanate and have to start and have to come from the government. And so let me give you some illustrations. You know, for instance, uh, as many of you all know, I build stuff. I've actually been a financial advisor for many years, a certified financial planner, registered investment advisor, and so on and so forth. And presently, I'm in the middle of a big construction job right now, building the Wild West Crypto Show's headquarters, a three-story, 22,000-square-foot building on the river here in, in Kerrville. And guess what? Here in the 11th hour, the fire marshal wants me to put a $200,000 sprinkler system into a concrete building. And in order to do that, he and the building official have to decide and have to use a formula from the 70s and determine that there's going to be 213 people in a building that's actually designed with 36 offices and a, and a TV studio. And so you can imagine that that's like 400% more occupancy than what the building is designed for. And so what do they do? They use an antiquated formula and then say, you know, we're not going to use any exception, although there's like 600 exceptions in the building code, and there's like 1,700 times that it says that uh, you have to do something required, okay? How in the world did we get to the point that people that have no dog in the fight, haven't expended a dime of their own money, are basically clerical in, in determination, and basically put the screws to the entire world and they get total anonymity, not anonymity, you can't sue them, basically, is what I'm really wanting to say. And so we have got a government that is too onerous, it's too in control, and like Ronnie said, has become part of the problem. And so where I can agree with some of the young folks about we need to uh, 
change this and we need to change that. I don't think defunding the police is really the problem. I think what we need to do is start defunding the government. They tell you what you have to drink. They tell you that you have to wear a seat bathe. They tell you that this has to be built this way, that has to be built that way. Go look at your cell phone bill. How many taxes are you paying to different entities that you have no earthly idea who they are? You know, you got the income tax, the sales tax, the inheritance tax. Oh, there is what there's something like 111 different taxes. I mean, it's just outrageous. Ronnie was telling us, you know, government's not the solution, it's the problem. Well, guess what? We got lots of problems now, and I think if you'll go back, you'll probably find the root of them is pretty much the government. In fact, there's a whole class of people. This uh, Kim uh, Kleisik, I think is her last name, is in, um, um, I believe it's in Baltimore, and running for Congress, did a great ad where she walked through Baltimore telling about all of the statistics. Had on some nice red dress, nice heels, and she says, this is the neighborhood, and she walked by with all the different uh, crime statistics and everything else uh, superimposed over all the walls of abandoned buildings and stuff. Talking about how there had been 53 years of Democratic Party control of that city. And so I think what we all need to do is, is, is heed the words of Ronald Reagan and realize we're just one generation away from losing this country. And so I would strongly suggest for you young people, get an education outside of whatever you might have heard at high school or college Google Ronald Reagan, listen to some of his stuff, all right? Uh, Google Milton Friedman and listen to some of his stuff. Go find Thomas Sowell in, the, uh, in Twitter and read his stuff because there's a lot of wise people out there that have been prognosticating this coming day. And if we don't wake up and if we don't return to our roots and if we don't get rid of crony capitalism, if we don't get rid of too much government and we don't get rid of all the anarchy that's going on inside of our government, we're going to find Ronald Reagan's words coming true. This will be the generation that we are away from and losing our country to. So get yourself out there and vote, but please get yourself educated before you do and use some discernment because the past does not have to be repeated. We'll be back next week over the fence post with the Wild West Crypto Show. <music>Howdy folks, Drew from the Wild West Crypto Show. I don't know if you're watching what's going on in the news, but I think we are facing a coming Armageddon and I have written a book called, Are You Prepared to Survive the Coming Armageddon? You can go to armageddaways.com and you can sign up and get a copy free or go to Amazon and get one. But this guide will give you the very basic things. If you've got to leave your house in a hurry because thugs are out there, this is the resource you need. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew, and it is time for my Cowboy Logic segment. And this first one right here, it applies to me. This is old Cowboy Logic of which I qualify. You know, it's funny, I'll be 60 this year, right? It is, it's so funny, I remember hearing my dad say all the time, you know, I, I'm, I may be 60, 70, 80 years old, or whatever, but I still feel young like I did, and that is what happens. So all you young bucks out there, Enjoy the ability to be to run and jump and be flexible and stuff while you're young because as you get older, not much more of that stuff goes on. So listen to this. Wrinkles mean you laughed. So they call these things crow's feet, and it does come from laughing, but it also comes from, you said, what? But bottom line is that, you know, message in that thing is folks enjoy life. They're we, we consume way too much news. I'll never forget, I was in San Francisco. I, I was in uh, Colorado when the San Francisco earthquake hit, 1986, 87, whatever that time period was. And we've been up in the mountains fishing, catching brook trout. We're scouting to go hunting for elk and stuff. Only thing about civilization we knew is occasionally you'd see a jet stream from a jet airplane way above us that was going across. But folks, we had escaped from the rest of the planet. When we came back down out of the mountains after eight days, and we found out that six days before there had been this big earthquake that the entire world was talking about, I realized that you can be somewhere and you don't have to be a victim of whatever's going on. And in these day and times, folks, man, take the time to get away from it and smile a little bit. Gray hair means that you cared. 
you always hear, and I heard it, oh my gosh, you're giving me gray hair. Folks, for me, I didn't get gray hair, it just all fell out, you know. And but but it is as you as you get older and you look back on your life, what is what how you see things changes a lot. What's important to you changes a lot. When you're young, it's about you know, you want every hair in place. You get a pimple on your face when you're in puberty. And to you, most people don't even notice it, but to you, it looks like it's that big, you know. In reality, don't take life too seriously that way. Doesn't mean you don't take life serious, but you do. There's an old country song. This one, the next piece of that is, scars mean you lived. You know, if you never take any chances and don't get out there and, and take these risks, even if it's, you know, jumping on a rope swing or whatever it is, my younger son... <clears throat> Not, not our very youngest, but the one second youngest. Um, I'll never forget one time I was in, when I was in Las Vegas, and he sends me a picture, and I mean, he was split right across here. And I mean, a bad, he's got a good scar from it uh, today. And uh, when I called him and said, oh, my gosh, what happened? He'd been out ice skating. And uh, he was wearing a pair of skates that were actually made for ice skaters, the one that had the brake on the front, and he didn't have a clue. He thought it was regular ice skates, so he goes and he goes to start running. Well, as soon as he went to his toe, it just planted him, and he hit one of the bars in there. And when I called him and I said, "Oh my gosh, Josh, that looks bad," and I said, uh, "You know, how are you feeling?" He goes, "Hey, Padre." He goes, "The chicks dig it." <laughs> I mean, so there, while he's got that scar, he has done some living, folks. So, you know, take life for how serious it really is, and the things that are serious, take them serious. But folks, most of life is going to be a great adventure if you'll just let yourself be free to the adventure. Next one here, folks, if the gate's open, close it. Just make sure you're on the right side of the gate. Really, I, I think a lot about that right now. We're in Texas, okay? You have all these people fleeing California and all these people fleeing New York and Chicago, Illinois, and other places. And you know where we're most of them are headed to Florida and Texas and a few other states because we still have the liberty and the freedom that this country was founded on. The concern that we have is, is that we don't want these folks that are now, they've gotten enough in the state that they created, and now they want to bring their crap over here. We say, don't California our Texas, or don't New York our Texas. I want to kind of close the gate behind them. Now, if you're like-minded and you believe in the things that we believe in, which is patriotism and freedom, carrying of guns, respect for your fellow man, liberties, if you believe in all those things, don't mind having you join us. But I have to tell you, if you believe 50% of the stuff you're leaving, folks, stay there. Don't come join us because we want to close that gate. Finally here, and this really runs true with me, probably to a degree it shouldn't, I have never really cared what people think about me because I get up every day and I look in the mirror and there's going to be people out there that do not like me. And they're going to say, well, yeah, well, you're this and you're that. But to be honest with you, I look in the mirror every day and I'm pretty proud of that man in the mirror because I have lived a life of integrity, of honesty. And so I really don't care what people think about me, but I care what dogs think about me. <laughs> dogs can sniff out a rat. And one of the things that I like is I don't have a dog. Had him when I was growing up. The reason I don't have him is because it's a responsibility that I'm not willing to commit to. We've got people, a neighbor lives with us, and they've got a dog, and they leave him locked in a cage. Dog can't wait for me to get there. Dog likes me. Well, I'll pet it, and I'll feed it. It applies to life, folks. If you're not willing to take care of it and be responsible for it, don't do it. But let me tell you something. If the dogs like you, you may be pretty good peeps. Folks, this is Wild West Crypto Show. Appreciate y'all always tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again here next week.